A render farm is a server that renders your animation faster than you can, but for a cost. I put my own money up to test a popular render farm so you can decide if it's worth it for you. In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process, including some lessons I learned along the way, and then I'll show you the final product, which I am pretty happy with, by the way. If you've been curious about using a render farm but haven't wanted to fork up the cash just to test one out, or you have no idea what it will actually cost, then this is for you. I did spend money to make this video so you wouldn't have to. It would mean a lot to me if you'd press the like button and subscribe to my channel where I can hopefully save you even more time and money with future videos. Full disclaimer, I'm a Blender user and have never used a render farm before. I chose to test out garagefarm.net because it was one of the top search results in Google. It works for most of the 3D software programs out there, but I'm using it with Blender. I have no affiliation with Garage Farm, and I did not receive any money from them to make this video. I decided to use a recent animation I already rendered on my own so I could compare the difference between rendering on my own computer and using the render farm. This would also give me a good idea of how much time I would save if I used the render farm. This project is 460 frames with volumetric fog, multiple light sources, a couple particle systems, and some high poly rock models I got from the Blender Guru Rock Essentials Pack. I originally rendered it out to individual PNG frames on my home computer using optics. On a GeForce RTX 2060 Super Graphics card, my processor is an Intel Core i9-10900X. I used the Open Images Denoiser in Blender 2.91. At 100 samples and cycles, each frame took me about 2 minutes to render. So to render this 19 second animation, it took about 14 hours. So I went to garagefarm.net and saw they had a free trial where they were giving out $25 in credits for signing up. That sounded good, so I created an account. I had to put my basic contact info in, but no credit card yet. I had to verify my email before I could log in. I wanted to read the terms and conditions to make sure that the render farm didn't somehow get rights to my project when I upload it. I found out that they don't. The user keeps all of their copyrights. They also said they don't sell your personal information, and I found their refund policy. If you're unhappy with a project, they have a process for you to dispute payment. But unless it was a technical problem on their end, you're probably not getting a refund. So make sure you have all of your settings right before you upload a file. I also found a helpful FAQ that answered most of my basic questions about using a render farm. When I logged in, I learned there were three priority levels you could choose from. The high priority allowed you to use up to 300 of Garage Farm's nodes, while low priority could only use 100. The higher the priority, the more it cost, but the faster it got done. I also noticed a catch. With the free $25 of credits, I was limited to only using 10 nodes unless I added funds to my account. I don't entirely know what one of their nodes is, but I wanted to have the full experience for this demonstration. So I added funds, 10 render credits for 10 US dollars. I entered my credit card, PayPal and Google Pay were other payment options. I had to download and install the Render Beamer app from their website. It works for a whole bunch of 3D programs. For Blender, it can be used on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Once the app installed, I was prompted to enter three settings. Automatically download finished frames does pretty much what it describes. Auto submit was unchecked. This allows you to have a project automatically render when you submit it through the plugin from inside Blender. I thought that sounded good so I checked it but I later regretted that and you'll see why soon. I recommend not checking this box like I did. Then I had to choose a folder on my computer for where the completed renders download. The Render Beamer app prompted me to log into my Garage Farm account. Then it brought me to a screen where I could install the plugins for whichever 3D software I planned on using. I installed the plugin for Blender. I was a little unsure of what to do next, and I admit I had to watch a YouTube video from Garage Farm on how to do this. It was very helpful though. I figured out I had to go into Blender and activate the add-on under User Preferences. I made sure all of my file settings were how I wanted them, I got nervous and for some reason decided to create a copy of the file before I uploaded it, just in case, but I don't think this was necessary. I also packed my files into Blender, but later found out that wasn't necessary either. I found the Render Beamer controls under the Render tab in the top bar. It had a few different options. I saw Cost Calculator, and that sounded interesting, but it took me to a web page where I had to enter info about the Octane Bench Score. I didn't have time for that, so I went back and clicked Beam It Up Animation. It gave me this warning saying I should do a render test first. There wasn't an option except OK, so I pressed that thinking I'd have an opportunity to test my render and get an idea of how much this was going to cost, but nothing happened. I checked again for a test render option in the drop down box, but I didn't see one. So I pressed beam it up animation again, and this time I got an error message. I fumbled around trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. I eventually restarted Blender and tried it again. This time it worked. When I pressed beam it up, I was given a warning that one of my files was missing. I recognized this was a bake file I had decided not to use anyway, so I clicked continue and then OK. It said my scene was being prepared, so I was excited. 
the Render Beamer app opened and started uploading. It uploaded fast at first, but then slowed way down. I was really surprised at how long it took to upload, almost 20 minutes. It's possible this was because I had some unnecessarily large files in my project, but I'm not really sure. After I uploaded, I went to my Garage Farm account in my browser and I saw my project was there. I was looking around for an option to test my render and again to estimate the cost, but no luck. Then I realized my frames were already being processed. Because I checked auto submit, as soon as the file uploaded, it started processing. It defaulted to the medium priority, which is probably what I was going to do anyway. I did have the option to change the priority, but at this point I just let it go. I later found out you can set your default priority to whatever you want in the settings. This was annoying, but in Garage Farm's defense, this was because I checked that auto submit button earlier without knowing what I was doing. I was later able to turn this off in the settings. As the project was rendering, it showed the status of the frames that were being rendered. I could see the render credits for my account going down steadily. I also noticed it showed how many projects and frames were being worked on in the high, medium, and low priority levels. I don't know how this compared to normal volumes, but I assume you could make decisions on which priority you wanted to use based off this information. I clicked this button to change my view, and it displayed these tiles which were way more helpful. It showed my priority, how many nodes I was using, my progress, estimated time left, and finally, an estimated cost for the project. This fluctuated a little bit as the job progressed, but not much, and it ended up being pretty accurate. I realized I was going to need some more credits, so I added another $25 worth just to be safe. Before I knew it, my project was rendered. I received an email notification immediately. The job cost 44.71 credits, which translated to $44.71 because I didn't get any discounts for a bulk credit purchase. Of course, the first $25 was the free promotional credit, so not that painful. The render took 22 minutes and 10 seconds to complete. I found my rendered images in the folder I had set up earlier. I imported the images back into Blender's video sequencer and I quickly rendered out my final animation. I didn't see any difference in render quality from my original, so it all looked good. Since I had turned off that auto submit button, I wanted to see how it would work if I did it right from the start. I went back to Blender and did the whole thing again. After it uploaded, I right clicked my new file and I selected upload using web manager. This brought me to a screen which accurately displayed my file settings. I changed the priority level to low and tried it again. On low priority, the job finished in 33 minutes and cost $24.53. So it was 11 minutes slower, but $20 cheaper to do it this way. Low priority seemed like the better deal to me. I submitted the project a third time and set the priority level to high. It estimated this would cost $87, but it rendered so fast it burned through the $10 I had left in my account before I could cancel it. So it clearly would have rendered the project in only a few minutes. Pretty impressive, but at $87, no thanks. So what did I learn about using my first render farm, garagefarm.net? Well, once you have your account set up, the app installed, and you figure out what you're doing, this can save you a massive amount of time on rendering. I could definitely see using this for projects in the future, but I will probably stick to the low priority settings to save money. I ended up finding that Garage Farm has a YouTube channel with tutorials for every software program that works with the render farm. It was pretty useful, and if I had looked there first, I'd have saved a lot of time and a little bit of frustration. A day after I did these renders, I received what looked like a personalized email from Garage Farm's director of operations. He extended a thank you for signing up and asked if I had any problems during the process. I replied that I didn't understand how to do a test render. He quickly responded and explained that you can set the step value of your settings to render only one in a certain number of frames, for example every 20th frame. This will give you an average cost per frame, which you can multiply by how many frames you're rendering. It answered my one remaining question and scored big points for Garage Farm in the customer service category. Having never used a render farm before, I don't know how this compares to others, but I was happy with the final product, impressed with the speed, and the low priority cost wasn't bad. I really hope this helped somebody out there who was curious about using a render farm. If you feel like sharing any experience with either Garage Farm or any other render farm, please leave a comment. I would really appreciate it if you liked the video. I would love to have you see my future videos by becoming a subscriber. Thanks for watching and stay creative.